Welcome, this is Majesty Sussex Report, your destination for full coverage of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex visit to Colombia. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. I'm Antonio. Before Prince Harry and Meghan even touched down on Colombian soil, the first Afro-Colombian vice president gave a press conference to outline the purpose of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex visit to the South American country and to advise that through the work of the Colombian government leadership, they had achieved that the United Nations approve the resolution to recognize July 25th as the International Day of Women and Girls of African Descent. The VP's voice couldn't hide her emotions and sometimes nervousness as it almost broke or cracked a few times as she spoke about cyberbullying and her own experience being targeted. Madame Vice President, good morning. You and Duchess Meghan Markle share a lot of things. One of them has been cyber attacks, racist comments that have, of which you've been targeted. Tell us a little about the experience you have had in these two years of government to fight against this situation in Colombia and the experience that you might, that you and the Duchess can contribute or work together to have this discussion on a national level. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I think I told the story of racism and racial discrimination and what it is like as a child and have been aware of it all my life. Yes, since I was 13 years old, I started defending a river together with my community. And from there, I began to feel the differential treatment of my community. From there, I began to feel exclusion as part of how they were treating my community just because we raised our voices to protect a river a river which was part which is part of our community since then i have not stopped for a day in which i have not made injustices visible since then my struggle for social justice for human rights, for the environment, for peace, for human dignity, has it's, it, it is permanent. Yes, I come here with an agenda and to say a little about the campaign. I do remember that many people told me that I should not talk about racism because talking about racism will not get me any votes. And I said, how could I not? And to obtain votes, I would have to then silence myself and silence about the problem that affects our society, that without any doubt, it has affected my family, my community, we bear the scars of racism on our flesh. I could not not talk about it. Cyberbullying is a problem, not just racially driven, but also because of gender issues or political issues. For women today in politics, or even if you're a woman who has visibility in the world, where you occupy space, we become exposed to an enormous level of violence. Violence on social networks that does affect us. It affects our very being. It affects our dignity. And without a doubt, it doesn't only happen to women. But most worrying thing about cyberbullying or hatred on social networks or expressions of violence is that they are affecting our children, they're affecting our teenagers. 
injustice here and the year is not even over yet it's not the entire year i've become even more sensitive to this issue faced with this face to face i have seen the reports even the investigations that have been done some have been done by the media where in just this year and the year has not ended yet I've been the victim of over 12,000 attacks of hatred, racial um, uh, uh, racism on social networks. I'm not doing this just because of my experience. It's not about my experience, but we have to do something about it. We have to do something about it in society, as a country, as humanity. Thank you very much. Duke and Duchess of Sussex touched down in Bogota on the morning of August 15th, greeted warmly by Vice President Marquez and her partner Rafael Yerni Pinello. The greeting was more than just a ceremonial kind of greeting. It was a heartfelt connection between, I guess, like-minded leaders. Um, during their initial meeting, which included traditional Colombian coffee and tea and pan de ba... Mm, the Vice President expressed her admiration for Princess Diana, Harry's late mother, and shared how Princess Diana had um, plans to visit Colombia before her untimely passing. Marquez noted how Prince Harry's presence in the country felt as if it were a continuation of that dream offering an opportunity to showcase the resilience and warmth of the Colombian people. The meeting set the tone for the rest of the Sussexes um, for their visit, where they would engage deeply with Colombian culture, youth, and social issues. The first official engagement of the day took place at Colegio Cultura Popular, a charter school in Bogota. Prince Harry and Meghan, accompanied by the vice president, Marquez and her partner were greeted by the school's headmaster, Leonel Umania Barra, and a student named Jose David. Now, let me just stop there for a second and say, Jose David, I'm with you, buddy, because I have had that role at my school in Venezuela. In Venezuela, same as in Colombia, there. I don't know if all schools have it. My school had it, and obviously, El Este Colegio Cultura Popular also has it. The, we were called back then ambassadors of the school. So you would have to be a student who you know you got good grades and you were in good standing and stuff like that. So a nerd. No, I'm, j I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but you were basically ambassador for, 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 for the school. So if there were any special guests, if there was people coming from the government, if there were people who were guests from, the, from another country like the U.S. or something, you would be called upon to um, give a tour of the school. And if it was like an official visit or something, someone really important, then you would be accompanying the uh, vice president or the president, sorry, the headmaster, <laughs> the, the, the headmaster or principal of um, the school. Many times when they were parents um, coming or coming to visit the school to see if they wanted their, their child to come to that school, we would be called upon to 
take the parents on on a tour and answer any questions that that they had also answer questions of the potential student so i just wanted to interject that so jose david i'm with you i'm with you i, I see you buddy i see you um, the visit was centered around an insight session with students discussing the impact of social media on their lives megan dressed elegantly in a navy summer suit and Harry in a coordinated dark blue suit, listened intensely as students shared personal stories about the positives and negatives of the digital world. Megan praised the students as impressive, smart, and savvy, while emphasizing the importance of self-reliance in navigating the digital landscape. Harry always focused on mental health, engaged um, the students in discussing about how they manage social media use at home. The session was not just a typical school visit. It was a meaningful exchange that highlighted the Sussex's ongoing commitment to creating a safer digital world, an issue they have championed through the um, Archwell Foundation. After their time at the school, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, along with their hosts, traveled to San Juan de Pasto, where they immersed themselves in Colombia's vibrant culture. The couple attended a lively theater performance and were treated to a musical and dance display at the Plaza del Carnaval y la Cultura. The event was a celebration of Colombia's rich um, heritage and culture. And it was clear to me, anyways, that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were having fun. Um, Megan, who changed into a colorful Navajo weaver dress by Colombian designer Joanna Ortiz, and Harry, who also swapped outfits, of course, the guy has to be fashionable too, um, took in the sights and sounds with a genuine enthusiasm. Now, the, the, um, the, the piece itself, uh, the cultural piece, it's called um, Beso del Col Colibri, and that translates to the Hummingbird Kiss. And the Hummingbird Kiss is an interdisciplinary artistic experience that integrates elements of the living arts to create a ritual of connection and harmonization. This work is inspired by the ancestral tradition of the Amerindian people and is enriched by the songs of Gloria Uribe Sierra, a maternal figure who symbolizes harmony and balance. Through the hummingbird dance and solar, um, and solar um, symbolism, the relationship with the cosmos is explored, honoring the sun and marking the change of the, um, change of the seasons and cycles. In, in addition, the hummingbird is presented not only as a tribute or uh, um, tribute of the, of the solar, um, but also as a war deity, um, but also as, as the means or the channel between the divine and the human. It underscores the role as a sacred messenger. Um, so this, this work stands out um, for its cultural depth and it's focused on the sacredness of communication between us beings and um, God uh, or gods. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a very interesting piece. It's beautifully done. Um, and the way with the costumes and everything, it's just, you know, it, it can, you can be easily immersed into, into it. And now I'm going to just, give my rant for for a minute or two if, if you you know I'll, allow me to i got so angry so angry after i have watched some people's um uh comments at the live broadcast when it was being broadcast 
when I've heard other people talking about this on other channels or whatever, if you don't know something about a person's culture, shut the F up. Just shut the F up. That's all I want to say to you. People are so disgusting. Humanity and these ignorant a-holes. Someone wrote in one of the comments, oh, that looks like a circus. Oh, is it a circus? If you don't know what it is, shut up. Or perhaps the right thing to say might be, that looks quite interesting. I wish we knew what was the history behind it, or I would love to know what's the story it's telling. Or what, what is it? But making assumptions about people's cultures and things that they hold sacred to them pisses me off. Because so many of you, and I'm speaking of, 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 of everyone, no one wants anyone to come to their culture or to look at certain symbolisms or things that one is traditional and one has of one's culture and people make fun of it or people start to say it looks like a circus or it's like clowns or any of this nonsense, right? Like there's a certain amount of respect that you should have. And for any and everyone on, on that island, like if you honestly are going to parade yourself around the world and ask for people to respect British culture, you just had a freaking riot over your identity and your culture that you think immigrants are taking away from you. And then you go in the comment section of one of these live broadcasts and you start to write all this nonsense about other people's culture. How dare you? How dare you? Ignorant. Ignorant. That's what you are. Absolutely ignorant. If we do not know anything about a person's culture or of a country's culture, shut up. Just shut up. Don't make assumptions. And laughing. I can, un I, I, look, I don't even understand why you people hate Meghan and Harry so much. But you need to stop this nonsense about every country that they go to. You seem to have the need to put that country down and those people down. Look at yourself in the freaking mirror. Get a clue. Get some culture. End of my rant. Thank you. A very special greeting to the Dukes, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan of Sussex, and to the Archwell Foundation and all of the collaborators and staff members that are here. Special greetings to our Minister of Culture arts and knowledge. Juan David Correa Ulloa. Special greetings to the director of the National Center for the Arts, Delia Zapata, Xiomara Valencia. To the students, children, and young people, the teachers from the Delia Zapata Oliveira National Art Center and the Candelaria Integrated School. Greetings to every uh, media that is here. It's a pleasure and an honor to welcome to our country, Prince Harry, 
and Meghan, the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex. Their first visit to a country in Latin America. It starts today in Bogota, a capital of more than 10 million inhabitants, which is recognized as the meeting point for all regions of Colombia. I am very happy to have you here at the center of Delia Zapata National Center for the Arts, that by name, it honors an Afro-descendant woman that has left us a very important legacy, one that is to develop an extensive work promoting the folklore from the scene in Colombia to the world. Together with her brother, Manuel Zapata Oliveira, one, one of their works and research on the dances and music of the Pacific and the Caribbean region. Today we wanted to show Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the National Art Center in its diversity and splendor through the play called To Lose Yourself and Not to Lose Yourself of the company Petra, who made a very beautiful adaptation of the novel de Jose Eustaquio Riviera. As we know this year, the Ministry of Culture, Arts and Knowledge, headed by Minister Juan David Correa, has launched a very important agenda for the celebration of the centenary of this wonderful literature. Then we were in the emblematic Teresita Gomez room, which honors Honors, honors her name, one of the teachers, most important, a teacher of culture of our, of our country, where the artist DJ Alexi Play performed with an ensemble, did a contemporary dance group. And finally, we are here now, arrived at this beautiful terrace to enjoy a sample, very special of part of Pasture Carnival on the construction. This, this, this um, kiss, kiss of the hummingbird, part of our heritage, which is very diverse. That is what we would like to honor today and to make it known to the world, the wealth and the beautiful culture, but also the joy and enthusiasm of our people. We, the Colombian people, who always strive to get ahead. We welcome everyone to our country. We welcome you with open arms. During these days, um, we will be visiting territories and dialoguing with children and young people, with women, with leaders, Thank you. Thank you for being here in Colombia. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your willingness to be here and to have come to share, but also to build ties, to go to work, because there's problems that affect us all that affect humanity, like cyberbullying, violence, violence on social networks, and discrimination. As the Vice President of Colombia, I give you the welcome, and it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all the media that has showed up. Thank you for being present.
Okay, so if you folks are paying attention, look at how Harry completely moves his hand from holding Megan's hand to getting into protective mode and putting his hands uh, over, over her back on his waist, on her waist, as soon as he saw El Colobri, as soon as he saw the hummingbird approaching Megan, trying to hug her. I love this guy. One of the key focuses of the Sussexes visit was their participation in the Responsible Digital Future Conference. This three-part summit was a crucial platform for discussing the very that Harry and Megan have been passionate about, online safety, tech accountability, and the mental health of young people in the digital age. The conference featured panels led by youth and social leaders who shared their experiences with online threats, as well as discussions on the current tech landscape and its future. And for me, the most important place that I sit in the world right now is as a mother. So I look at it through the lens of what my children, our children are going to adopt as they get older and how we can keep them safe, because I do believe all of us agree, despite whatever disparities there are throughout the world, no one can test the fact that we want to keep our children safe. So that has been a fundamental and incredibly important aspect of how I've approached our philanthropic work. The Sussex's um, involvement in this summit was a testament to their dedication to fostering a safer digital world aligning um, perfectly with their Archwell Foundation's mission. Thank you for the question, and thank you all so much for being here tonight and taking so much of your time to listen to these panels. I hope you feel as inspired as I do, and I think that leads right into your question, which is part of our goal when my husband and I founded the Archwell Foundation and had our own lived experience, which a lot of you may have witnessed in terms of what online harms can look like. We knew that in finding a solution, and as my husband often refers to the root cause, that has to start with people that have a level of digital literacy that they are living in and out every day. Now, whether that's by choice or because it's being pushed to them so constantly, they become experts in this field. Prince Harry and Megan's visit to Colombia is a journey deeply rooted in shared values and a commitment to making a positive impact. Their interactions with students, cultural leaders, and digital advocates reflect their genuine desire to connect with people and address the pressing issues of our time. Vice President Francia Marquez's decision to invite the Sussexes was inspired by their story which she had followed closely, especially through their Netflix docu-series. Marquez saw in Megan a woman whose journey could inspire many Colombians, particularly women and women of Afro-descendants, to strive for a better future. As the Duke and Duchess of Sussex continued their work in Bogotá and then later in Cartagena and Cali, their visit serves as a reminder of the power of connection, the importance of cultural exchange, and the impact of standing up for the issues that matters the most. This trip preceded the inaugural Global Ministerial Conference on Ending Violence Against Children in Colombia, that will be Colombia, set to take place in November has not only strengthened the bonds between the Sussexes and Colombia, but also highlighted the shared goals of promoting safety, equality, and empowerment for all. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex 
visit to Colombia was marked by meaningful interactions, cultural appreciation, and a steadfast commitment to creating positive change. From their warmth reception by Vice President Marquez to their engagement with students and cultural leaders, Harry and Megan's journey was a powerful example of how leaders can use their platform to foster understanding, inspire action, and promote a better future for all. As they continue their visit in Colombia, their work serves as a beacon of hope and a reminder that together we can address the challenges of today and build a brighter future for tomorrow. Next, Prince Harry and his wife Meghan have arrived in Colombia for the first stop of a four-day tour of the South American country. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were invited by the country's vice president for what has been dubbed a DIY rule tour. Our South America correspondent Ione Wells reports from Bogota. Prince Harry and Meghan are no longer working royals, but as their first visit to Latin America shows, when on tour, they still get a majestic welcome. They're here in Colombia as guests of the country's Vice President, Francia Marquez, the first black woman to hold that role. For both parties, this visit is about sharing ideas to protect children from harm online. They met children at this school before discussing solutions with activists and experts too. Prince Harry and Meghan have spoken openly about attacks they faced on social media. Colombia's Vice President said she too had faced discrimination since she was a child. For both parties, this is also about publicity, with a couple and government only allowing their own personal videographers into some events. Prince Harry and Meghan hope to promote their campaigns to make the internet a safer place and maintain their influence and visibility on the world stage. They still attract meetings with global leaders. For the government here, it's publicity too, ahead of elections next year. The Sussexes have seen here doing similar high profile events back in the UK after suffering threats online, no longer receiving the government-funded security they did as working royals. This second overseas tour in just a few months leaves many wondering if international campaigning is where their focus is turning. Ione Wells, BBC News in Bogota. And that is the latest world news. Stay with us here. So I say this. I say this to the institutions like the BBC that has lost its objectivity and all of those who are drowned in, in ignorance and hate, please educate yourself before you make opinions and commentary on a nation. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are not your definition of working royals. I understand that. They're not paid by the taxpayers in the UK. They don't take or receive one pence of taxpayer money. So stop, please stop your dangerous campaign of hate and desire to put the life of the Sussexes in danger. It's none of your damn concern who is paying for their security or how much security they have. If the government of Colombia wants to pay for their, their security or this entire trip, that's the government of Colombia's concern, not yours. And to call Colombia an imperfect country that doesn't have any money, please keep your ignorance to yourself. It's none of your damn business what the government of Colombia decides to do, who it decides to pay for, what it decides to pay for, what kind of conference it decides to hold in its country, in its territory. You should focus on the hardworking royals you have. The ones that you pay, what, hundreds of millions of pounds for every year. Focus on them. I really hope you're getting your money was worth. Are you? And as for the publications that have indicated that there's going to be a summit in Balmoral to discuss whether or not to take away the titles of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Don't you people have more pressing things to think about? Like maybe, f I don't know, miraculously being cured from cancer or something like that? 
Look, let me say this to you. Please, I'm not even joking. Go ahead and strip them of their titles. Go ahead. You know what it will do? It will do the opposite of what you want it to do. It, they will become even more famous, more popular, because the world will continue to see how petty you all are, how weak King Charles is, how ridiculous the monarchy is, and how pathetic you all are. Continue, please do, continue on this road of asking for their titles to be stripped. Let's make a deal. Take the titles, leave them alone. Don't ever write another article about them. Don't mention them ever again, ever. Let them do their thing. Let the rest of the world enjoy their work. Let the rest of us enjoy their philanthropy. Let the rest of us get educated with the things that they're interested in so we can have a better world. And the rest of you, you can just go into the swamp, stay there, enjoy each other, and drown yourselves in ignorance. Merci. Muchas gracias. Okay? That's it. And I hate ending an episode with that kind of attitude. <laughs> but damn. <laughs> These people are irritated. Gosh. They make no sense whatsoever. But for the rest of you who have stayed until the very end, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you. And stay tuned as I will do the same thing um, as I coverage, as I cover the um, visit to Colombia. So today, whatever I can um, get out to you as soon as possible, I will. But the following day, you'll always get sort of a, summary of everything of the day prior so here we go hope you enjoyed day one and here comes day two bye for now take care everyone Primer día en Colombia de Harry y Meghan. Los duques de Sussex tendrán agenda no solo en Bogotá, Andrea, el fin de semana también visitarán Cartagena y estarán en mi ciudad, en Cali, en el Festival de Petróleo. Que no se lo van a perder. Hoy hablaron con estudiantes con quienes compartieron mensajes sobre la importancia de eliminar el ciberacoso y de hacer también buen uso de las redes sociales. Colombia se convierte en el primer país de América Latina en ser visitado por el príncipe Harry y Meghan, duques de Sussex. Luego del recibimiento que les hizo la vicepresidenta Francia Márquez, arrancó la agenda de la pareja en un colegio de la localidad de Puente Aranda, en Bogotá, donde intercambiaron experiencias que hoy marcan la agenda global, las redes sociales. ¿Cómo estas buscan conseguir un objetivo en los niños para intentar buscar visitas fáciles de alguna forma embobándolos? Dentro de los propósitos de esta visita está el de propiciar entornos digitales seguros y apoyar iniciativas de salud mental. Tenemos la responsabilidad como papás y mamás de ciudadanos digitales. Tenemos que ser un modelo a seguir. Con una explosión de ritmo y color, los duques disfrutaron de una muestra cultural y artística que reflejó la diversidad de nuestro país.